माइक वाला गाने गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन मे रिक्वेस्ट मिस्टर विकास सिंह प्रेजिडेंट एस सी बी ए एंड मिस्टर प्रदीप कुमार राय वाइस प्रेजिडेंट एस सी बी ए टू काइंडली एस्कॉट ऑनरेबल मिस्टर जस्टिस पी एस नरसिम्हा जज सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड मिस्टर अनिल जेविया चेयरमैन एशिया पैसिफिक सेंटर फॉर आर्बिट्रेशन एंड मीडिएशन टू द डायस May I request Mr. Mukesh Kumar Singh, Member Executive SCBA, to kindly present a bouquet to Honourable Mr. Justice P. S. Narasimha, Judge Supreme Court. May I request Ms. Nandini Gupta to kindly present a bouquet to Mr. Anil Devi, our Chairman, Asia Pacific Centre for Arbitration and Mediation. <coughs> Honourable Mr. Justice P. S. Narasimha, Judge Supreme Court. Mr. Vikas Singh, President SCBA, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, Vice President SCBA, Mr. Anil Zaviya, Chairman, Asia Pacific Center for Arbitration and Mediation, and my fellow colleagues, a very good evening to you all. The topic for today's lecture is mediation, and with pending cases of around 40 million in lower courts, close to 5.9 million in high courts, and around 50,000 cases in Supreme Court, there is an emergent need to unburden the judicial system and to popularize alternate dispute resolution mechanism. And one of the methods under ADR is mediation. India was one of the first prominent signatories to the Singapore Convention on Mediation, which resulted in the promulgation of the draft of the Mediation Bill 2021. And there are several statutes containing mediation provisions, such as Code of Civil Procedure 1908, Arbitration and Consulting Act 1996, Companies Act 2013, Commercial Acts 2015, and Consumer Protection Act 2019. It is important that the emphasis should be on mediation to unburden the courts and I'm sure members are going to be benefited by listening to the distinguished guests, and especially members who are mediators also in this court. May I now request Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, Vice President SCBA, to kindly give his welcome address. Honorable Justice P.S. Narasimha, sir, who is a kind of friend of the bar, and he is member of the bar and because of whom we have got 250 mediators trained. He was also part of the MCPC those days. And I requested him two, three times. And he is the person who never says no to any of the demand of the bar because he still feels that he is part of the bar. So we are grateful, sir. <laughs> Mr. Anil Javier, the head of Asia Pacific Arbitration Center. Mr. Vikas Singh, President of SCBA. Rahul Kaushik, Secretary SCBA, Honorable P.H. Parikh, sir, six time President of SCBA and ten times President of ISCORA, distinguished senior members, mediators, senior advocates, and cricket players. When we thought, actually, sir, three years back when Sri Ram Panchuji and me together we decided to have a conference in Bengaluru. With the blessing of Honorable Justice M. N. Benkat Chalaya, in that conference only we decided and we thought that why not we should have some trained arbitrators, trained mediators and arbitrators in Supreme Court. I tried to pursue on both counts, and fortunately, because there were such members, Honorable Justice Ramanna was there as CJI, who agreed. Honorable Justice Narsimha was there as a member. Honorable Justice Amar Shah, Honorable Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul, and those days, Honorable Justice Sanjay Kishan, uh, Sanjay, uh, this is Kanvilkar. And we have got 250 mediators trained at Delhi Judicial Academy. That was the first time when Judicial Academy was open for the lawyers. 
I am grateful for the great support extended by Honorable Justice Narsimha in this regard. And all the mediators who are performing, sir, they are settling so many matters. Sonal Patilji is here. Those days, the officers of MCPC, Meji Bolu, Sonal Patilji, and even Yajwinder Singh. All three extended all kind of help. They even stayed with us at Delhi Judicial Academy. And that's how, sir, 250 mediators were trained. It was a five days, 40 hours training program. We had it in 10 batches. And I stayed there. And I actually, in each and every session, we enjoyed because each tenor has something different. And they have something different to offer. There was an idea that most of the civil matters, when it is brought to the Supreme Court, it should be first given to the mediation. And thereafter, such matters may be listed before the court. Gradually, we are about to achieve that target. Initially, all the TPs were, were marked. It's still 40 mediators who were trained in the list of 250. They have not been impaneled because some of them applied late. Some of them applied, but because two, three other persons are left, they have not applied, so those names are pending, and I hope that those will be cleared in the, within the, this tenure itself before 17th. So before 17th, I will be finishing all these 250 mediators listing. <laughs> Mediation is something in which has always been in the question. Somebody who argues against mediation, they will say that Lord Krishna was the mediator. And despite Lord Krishna, who was the God himself, Mahabharat happened. But someone may also argue that at least there was an opportunity because of that mediation only, it was decided that despite having the war between both the sides, in the evening there will be no war, both sides will be meeting each other, at least something was achieved. So something or other has to be achieved if you actually, you are willing to talk and interact to each other. Then there is another way of mediation which Angad did. In Ramayana we say that Angad went there and he tried to mediate. But in fact, when he said to Ravan that, no, just lift my leg, he put the, le the leg down. That was not part of mediation which we all have been taught. I am really happy to see each and everyone here who have been part of that mediation training program. Even trainers, I miss them because I, we, short time we could not invite them. But I invited them recently in a function which was held especially for mediators and newly uh, elected, uh, selected AORs. I am grateful, sir, Honorable Justice Narasimha, that you have agreed to, uh, for this program. And really, we all are grateful that in such a manner this training program was conducted, that in future, you will find that many litigations will be avoided. And ultimately, when we are going to assess the success of lawyers, it will be assessed not by the success in the litigation. It will be assessed that how many litigations were avoided and that will be the parameter to decide whether you are a successful lawyer or not. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Pradeep, sir. May I now request Mr. Anil Xavier, who is chairman of Asia Pacific Center for Arbitration and Mediation, as an expert on this field, to kindly address the gathering. Mr. Mr. Anil Zee. Honorable uh, Justice Narasimha, Mr. Vikas Singh, President of CBA, Mr. Pradeep Kumar, Vice President, Mr. Rahul Kaushik, Senior Advocates, Mediators, and your friends. In fact, uh, ADR's IDR can be expanded as alternative dispute resolution. And today when, actually yesterday, when Mr. Vikas Singh called me, I thought ADR can also be construed as alternative distress resource management <laughs> because because in fact mr sriram banju had to be here since uh, he is not there i am taking as an alternative uh, resource person see it, it, congratulations to all the mediators who have been trained by the supreme court but i would say this is the first day in your mediation career because mediation doesn't or the profession of a mediation or the or the involvement of a mediator doesn't end at the training because you don't become a mediator just because of 40 hours of training. It has to be 
evolve in a better manner because there are two important aspects. Because when mediation began, when uh, in fact I took the mediation training in about 20 years back, at that time mediation was not supposed to be a major profession. It was a huge risk and many people think thought why he is going to take meditation uh, during, because of the stress of litigation, is he going to take a meditation training? Uh, but the things have evolved and now the present day mediators are at the verge of a enormous, you can say a big bang theory that is coming up because of two important aspects. One is the Singapore Convention and the second is a very, very, what do you call it? Can, you can say it is a controversial decision or a good decision or a bad decision, but the fact remains that foreign lawyers are going to come for ADR practice in India. That means they will be occupying the space of mediation and arbitration in a big way. And how are we going to face that huge demand of, an, of a global profession? So first of all, we need to know that being trained as a mediator or being part of a code and mediation process will not take you to the international arena because mediation is a global profession. And if you see, we have 1.4 billion population. If you, if you took it, for a comparison purpose, I can say it is 14,200 14, lakh people in this country. And a country which has only 60 lakh population, for example, Singapore, have got only 60 lakh population. That means every, for every one mediator in Singapore, we should be actually having 250 mediators in India. And with the enormous numbers of international mediators that are coming from Singapore, which is, which is having only 60 lakh population, how many international mediators which, which uh, we should be producing from India? And how many we actually have? It's very, very limited. You can't find maybe more than 10 international mediators from India when the, you can see actually hundreds of mediators from Singapore. If hundreds of mediators are from Singapore, you, you, you should know that we should be having 2.5 lakh mediators from India based on the population ratio. But how do we make international mediators? Because first of all, the first step, of course, is a training. But after the training, what happens? How, how we need to move forward? And that is something that I would like to address because training and part of the training program is not something that you should be keen or you should be looking forward to listening. So the first and most important thing is putting you in a, in a visibility to the international, what do you call it, disputants, or the community who needs mediation. And how do they recognize you as a mediator? It is only on accreditations. Only accreditation can take you forward in putting yourself in front of the international disputants com community, because they will not be selecting you as a mediator based on your training because they, they know all the mediators have been trained and they are, they are trained for 40 hours. And since mediation is a confidential in-house process, nobody can peep inside the mediation room and assess what you are doing. So you, be, you, you may be an effective mediator, you may be a bad mediator, but a disputant will never know unless he comes before you and sits before you to understand what type of a mediator you are. So the, the endorsement of a good mediator comes from different accreditations. And when you're talking about accreditations, there are many institutions which give accreditations nationally and internationally. But the test of an accreditation is, with that single accreditation, in how many countries you can practice mediation, and in how many countries your name is visible as a mediator, and in, in what manner they are selected, and what is the grade of accreditation that you can possess. Actually, in the last two days, we had a summit, an APCAM International ADR summit, and of course, Justice Narasimha was uh, heading one session, and there was a there was a huge gathering which was actually looking forward to developing the profession. So, when you're talking about mediation, there are two streams. One is we have mediators over here, we have lawyers over here, and mediation advocacy is also something that is growing very rapidly, because mediation is not just confined to family disputes internationally. And if you look at Singapore Convention, of course, it does not consider family mediations. It does not consider cons consumer mediations. It only, it only looks at commercial mediations. So commercial mediation is something that we need to look into very seriously. And in commercial mediations, the, see, normally we have a, uh, what do you call, an assumed thinking that mediation is always ad hoc. It is ad hoc in the sense 
it is a service to humanity and it's a service to certain litigants in certain type of disputes but in commercial disputes see it's a commercial matter a, a, a two parties who have a commercial disputes are trying to resolve it on a commercial need and whether it is litigation whether it is arbitration or whether it is mediation ultimately they are getting a commercial benefit and therefore in commercial disputes the fee of a mediator is also high the fee of a lawyer is also high in the sense what they are getting in maybe in arbitration in two years or in litigation in five years or six years they are getting in few weeks or maybe in few days in mediation and that commercial parties are willing to pay much higher than a lawyer who is appearing in a litigation or in arbitration because they are getting a commercial benefit faster and in mediation what we are uh, we are looking of course you are all trained mediators we are not looking at a compromise see suppose one person is uh, entitled for 100 rupees or 1000 rupees he is not asked to pay or receive only 500 rupees as a compromise for a settlement in international mediation it's always ad advancing or what you call getting advantage of the dispute because a dispute is always considered as a opportunity instead of 1000 rupees or 100 rupees which is due in a commercial mediation actually they are getting a benefit which is much beyond 1000 rupees so the the value addition that you get in mediation is much higher and regarding accreditations or regarding the presence and, and whether it is possible for a mediator in india to grow and uh, to to cross borders and to uh, establish their presence in other countries i can i can see iram here because iram is also a executive director of apcam and she was also a mediator i think in the high court and uh, she was trained by the high court and the way in which she was taken forward some water give me some water <coughs> the way in which uh, she got opportunities to go abroad in fact she was appointed as a mediator from icc she was appointed as a mediator in un see the way the, the advancement how is it possible to become visible in international matters is only accreditation in fact uh, she was the first imi certified mediator from india and she was also the certified mediator from apcam so the possibility of growing of flying abroad of uh, going beyond borders is possible once you have an accreditation which is internationally valid so i would urge you that don't restrict your mediation practice in domestic area only you have to go beyond because see why are we restricting ourselves from going international when small countries it is not just bigger than one of our cities they are conquering the world they are going beyond borders they are establishing themselves as mediators in international matters and we are going to their places for resolving international matters so it is highly required that our presence is established and i don't know whether it will be controversial because now of course we are the highest populated country but the next highest populated country does not produce mediators because they don't people or commercial world don't believe them and in fact many of those institutions in other countries are actually looking at the india to help them to get good mediators which can resolve international disputes so let me urge you to look at the larger picture to look at a space where you can act as mediators internationally and and also the one field that uh, we also should look into is the area of mediation advocacy see now i think many of the international law firms which will come to india they are not allowed to practice in courts so they will be looking at arbitration and mediation how do we combat them or how do we uh, cross that limit i think we need to look into the aspect of mediation advocacy i'm yeah, i didn't get that i'll come to that i'll come to that yeah 
No, basically, before before maybe we can have a question answer session. That uh, of course we'll look into that. But what I'm saying is, mediation advocacy is something which is not actually practiced or actually developed in India. And mediation advocacy trainings are also very very rare in India. And we are, of course, if you look at law colleges, we are trained for adversarial systems, where we are we are taught to fight, and not uh, taught to look into the other person's perspective. So we are, when we are looking at advocacy in international matters, now most of the companies, because in, uh, in international commercial, uh, what do you call, chambers, one factor that is going very high or very, very popular is the concept of a pledge to mediate. In fact, a pledge to mediate has been campaigned by some of the organizations in France at the very beginning, and then it was pop made popular in, um, in Singapore. And now, in fact, one of the organizations in India is also promoting it. And some of the public sector undertakings in India, some of the major public sector undertakings in India, have actually revised their contracts from arbitration clause to mediation clause. It was not because of their preference to mediation, but they were forced to do it because of the pressure from the other side. In fact, international community, they were not looking at getting into a, an adversarial process of adjudicating their dispute, but they wanted to resolve the matter amicably preserving the relationship. Because one of the most important aspects in any international dispute is the fact of maintaining the relationship and carrying on with the business without terminating or without breaking the relationships. So it's very important that we need, because see, you can't, as, as all mediators, you, you should be knowing, the most difficult part of a mediation process or, or that of a mediator is to find out the interest of the other parties and to invent options for mutual gains. Theory-wise, it's very simple, because in theory, we, we uh, always teach the mediators that this is interest, this is position, which, which you can see outside as a position, and you need to go beyond the position and find out the interest. But as practicing mediators, you know that this is very, very difficult, because how do you go inside the mind of a person and identify the interest? So it's very difficult. So the the parties, they will not be able to express what the real interests are, because whatever they are saying will be, in, in effect, the position itself. Whether they are, they are couching it in a different word or they are coming out with certain aspects, it will always be positions. So what we need is we need experts to assist them to come out with options, to identify the interest. And when you identify the interest, naturally the mediation advocate is also studying the matter from the opposite side's perspective and going into the shoe of the, shoe of the other side and finding out what the interest of the other side is. <clears throat> so the expert from the party side, or the advocate from the party side, is absent in most of the mediation proceedings that is happening in India, in, especially in commercial matters. In family matters, definitely, it's a more party-oriented process. But in commercial disputes, you need an expert to advise the clients as to how they should be uh, dealing with the mediator. Because to get the best of the mediator also, the parties need some assistance. You can't tell the parties, see, we are in mediation, and we follow facilitative style of mediation, and we are following the, the, the theory of principle negotiation. So your adversarial negotiation tactics will not work here. So you go and study for principle negotiation and come for mediation. You can't tell the parties that. But if, you are, if the parties are assisted by well-trained mediation advocates, then the entire scenario of mediation changes. It becomes a very sophisticated process of negotiation. And the best outcome that they can get, the parties can get, will come out. Because the mediation advocate will coach the clients how to behave in a mediation room and how he should tackle the other side in a mediation room. Because negotiation, it's not competitive. Because when we negotiate, we are trying to put our views on the opposite side and try to force them to agree to us. But the typical negotiation is you want the other side to agree what you want. And you need to help the other side to agree to what you want. So that means you are collaborating with the other side and helping the other side to take a decision which is in your best interest. And that can happen only if a trained a professional is there to assist the clients to do it. So the two aspects is one is the mediators should uh, get their presence internationally. You need to get accreditations. And uh, for more about it, because it's a, it's a long topic, so Iram is here in Delhi. She's a lawyer practicing in here. 
So if you want to get any assistance about accreditation, you can always contact her. And uh, mediation advocacy is another thing. And you need to get empaneled in international organizations. Because there is a real dearth of mediators in international community. And with all this, because I was told there are about 284 mediators in the Supreme Court. And see, definitely in the next year, after the, after the new law comes in, and we ratify the Singapore Convention, 284 is not enough. We need at least 2,80,000. That is the demand of international mediation. Because you know when the United Nations uh, working group was discussing on uh, the formation or making of the um, Mediation Act, uh, sorry, the, the model mediation uh, laws, the, the convention discussion was happening. And in fact, APCAM is a member in a working group two and three, which deals with arbitration and mediation. And during the discussions, it was mentioned that the most opted dispute resolution mechanism by international business community and the maximum representations that came from international chambers of commerce are to the effect that dispute resolution in international commercial matters should go to mediation because it helps business. It helps the growth of business. Therefore, the, the growth of mediation in international, of course, see, with the, with the enormous pendency of cases here and the number of cases that is, that is being filed every day, we don't have a dearth of cases in domestic matters, there is no doubt. But the problem is, maybe, maybe because of the luxury of domestic work, we are not looking outside. Maybe that, I don't know. But whatever it is, I, I'm, I'm sure there is a dearth of mediators in international field from India. And there is nothing lacking with this. If small places like Singapore or Malaysia or these type of the Asian Pacific countries, they can, they can produce hundreds of international mediators to cater their needs. I'm sure India should be able to be, the, in, be in the top of the list. And the lawyers don't, do not have to worry at all because I'm giving you my personal endorsement to that. You get more fees in mediation than in litigation and arbitration. It is, it is a fact. And if you look at most of the top-rated lawyers from Italy, from England, many other European countries, they have stopped their litigation practice and have shifted to mediation practice. Not as mediators alone, but as mediation lawyers. And it is huge money that is available because of the international, the volume of international commercial disputes and the fact that they are getting a resolution, maintaining the relationship and getting the best out of outcome out of mediation. So I would urge that all the mediators who have started their profession today and the mediators who are there already having a lot of experiences should look at the next level of growth. And it's not you are just your benefit I'm saying. It's, it's for the benefit of India because India is not on the ladder of international mediate mediation and we do not have a proper presence considering the size and and the and the what you call the prosperity and the and the and the magnanimity of India. We don't have that much representation. So I would I would urge, and of course, uh, as uh, just maximize there, I would urge MCPC also to look into it and uh, make proper changes so that we, from the Supreme Court at least, we produce the maximum number of mediators who can go or who can cross the borders and look into mediation. And whenever there is a and, and another important aspect of Singapore Convention is. It does not look into the aspect of seat. It is not situs-based like uh, arbitration. So any, a, a, any mediation which is between two uh, individuals or two companies from different jurisdictions, wherever you do it, because it, suppose you are doing it in India, it does not become domestic mediation uh, like an arbitration because if uh, arbitration, if it's done in India under part one, it becomes uh, or is deemed as a domestic arbitration, but it doesn't happen in uh, mediation. Wherever you do, it is international. And the, the site or the seat of mediation, it doesn't matter. So we should produce mediators to that extent that even if the parties are not from India, let us say two parties are from different jurisdiction, they should select the mediator from India and we should have that quality of mediators from India who are highly accomplished and people are confident to approach. So I wish all of you that maybe in the near future, once the 
the, the, our Mediation Act comes into force and uh, the Singapore Convention is ratified, the floodgates will be opened because we are just waiting for the Mediation Act to come because unless the Mediation Act is there, uh, there is no purpose in talking about this because we are, we are yet closed uh, the international matters and we do, will not have the assistance of the Singapore Convention because whatever mediation is happening now in India is only two, is two streams. One is the Cotonex mediation and one is mediation happening under the Arbitration Conciliation Act under the conciliation, uh, uh, what you call, part. Both these mediation are outside the scope of Singapore Convention. Both these are not recognized by the Singapore Convention. So we need a mediation law and that mediation law will open the floodgates and with the enormous volume of mediators that we produce, See, even if 10% are going international, we will dominate the mediation scenario, not only in the Asia-Pacific, but also the world. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Xavier, <coughs> for informing the members the scope of uh, mediation internationally, how far behind our country is, con considering the size of our country and how much scope is there. And most importantly, empowerment of all the mediators internationally, and on lighter vein that the fees is more in, than the arbitration, litigation, and mediation. I would now request Mr. Vikas Singh, President SCBA, to kindly give his address. Justice, Honorable Justice P.S. Narsimha, Mr. Anil Xavier, Chairman of the Asia-Pacific Arbitration and Mediation Council, Shri Pradeep Rai, our Vice President Rahul Kaushik, members of the bar, members of our executive committee, members of SCORA, senior members present here today. It's indeed our proud privilege that in our tenure in the SCBA, and fortunately for me, it's my second consecutive tenure, that we could provide for training for about more than 250 mediators of the Supreme Court. And this training has really benefited them to go as far as the mediation space is concerned and get into international mediation. And the whole purpose of having the uh, lecture series today was that the mediators, after having been trained, should know how they will actually benefit by the training, because the training per se will be of no use if they can't take it forward into the international arena as well as in the domestic arena and use it for the purposes of doing the actual mediation work, etc. This uh, was to be, this, this um, uh, lecture was to be done by Justice Call and Sri Ram Panchuji, of course, uh, Justice Narsimha was to be there. But unfortunately, Justice Call had a fracture and uh, he had to excuse himself. Shriram Panchu was here in Delhi till day before yesterday. He felt sick. He had to rush back to his native place. He said even if he gets better, he'll try and join. We are fortunate that Anil Xavier was here in Delhi for the same conference and we requested him. He was supposed to go back to Kochi today. He ex accepted our request and stayed back and uh, for this lecture. Uh, we are grateful to him. I personally am very bullish on mediation for two reasons. That in a normal litigation, there is a winner and a loser. Ultimately, when the litigation goes one way or the other, one party wins, the other party loses. Very rarely you will find in very, uh, very rare of those rarest of rare cases that the court ultimately does justice in a manner which tries to give the advantage to both the parties. But invariably, it is there is a winner and a loser. Mediation, there is no loser. Mediation, both sides are winners. And that's the best thing about mediation. Because if you are a winner, ultimately, at the end of the litigation, you don't go back with a, with a bad feeling. You go back as if this litigation or whatever this dispute resolution that you started off with has ultimately resulted in some benefit to you. Why I feel that this area needs to be developed in India very majorly is that in the US, when a commercial dispute is to start, 
the lawyers representing the two sides have a meeting prior to the litigation starting to see if there could be a middle area which they can find out. Because everybody knows that litigation is a long drawn process and in commercial disputes the delay in the litigation itself becomes a huge cause of concern if it's a project for the project delays, if it's a, if it's a uh, construction project, then the cost overrun, etc. So the, the, the uh, downside of a prolonged litigation has so many, uh, I would say, uh, multiplier uh, disadvantages that trying to settle the dispute prior to going for litigation, according to me, is a great way forward as far as our country is concerned we have a large number of disputes which languish in courts we have uh, courts uh, you know spending so much time in uh, in trying to resolve infrastructure uh, contracts issues and when when a contract with regard to a highway or a rail bridge or or any important public project comes up then the other downside is that the courts because of the urgency in the matter neglect the normal litigation because they have to decide this in a time-bound manner. If they don't do it in a time-bound manner, then the normal, the, the, the project will, uh, you know, sort of uh, get, get uh, very badly affected. So the further effect is that the normal litigation, which the entire country is waiting for an adjudication, gets pushed back because of these things which can easily be sorted by mediation. Anil very rightly said in the case of commercial disputes, whenever a party goes for a claim or for a dispute resolution, somewhere in the heart of his heart, he knows that this is what he should get. Although you, when you go to a court of law, you ask for the moon. But it is always inside the heart of the heart that you know this is what I will be satisfied with. If I get this much, at least my litigation is successful. The job of the mediator is to find out what is in the heart of that person, where he will settle where he feels that if it is given to him upfront now, he will close the litigation and go happy with that. And that what is in the heart of the person who's going in for litigation will correspondingly be convinced on the other side that if you wait for this litigation, you may end up paying what is claimed for. So if you're getting a solution midterm for a, 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 a particular sum, which is much less than what is being claimed for, then now, this is the job of a mediator, to be able to go inside the heart of the person and find out what exactly is his middle ground. And in the process, and as very rightly said, of course, Justice Narim Simha will elaborate further. It is, it is when, you, when you do the mediation part, you know exactly what you have to say to the plaintiff and what you have to say to the defendant and separately. So that both of them, you have to you know, sort of convince that your, for, as far as the plaintiff is concerned, you will have to tell him that your case is likely to be dismissed for XYZ reason. For the defendant, you have to tell him that your case is going to be allowed against you for this reason. And that's how, when they mo both meet, they say, all right, this is the middle ground we'll agree for. And that's why it's a win-win situation. The Indian Parliament, when the uh, uh, Singapore Convention India signed in 2020, uh, as an offshoot of that, I think the mediation bill is in the process and we are likely to get a mediation act very soon. And I had the privilege of uh, uh, being called by the select committee of the parliament to give my suggestions to the mediation bill, which is still to be discussed in the parliament. And some of the suggestions which I thought were important were that one of the clauses of the section of the proposed bill said that the mediator will not be an advocate in that matter. According to me, that's not that's not justified and I've suggested that a mediator should also be allowed. So when you do a pre-litigation mediation, the lawyers who are representing the both sides are the best mediators to decide what is the best ground. And if that, is, if that can be done, then both the lawyers on, of their respective side can also convince their side that this is how this matter should end rather than going for a prolonged litigation. And in doing so, in fact, I've also suggested that one of the reasons or one of the clauses which I've, in fact, I've made a proper um, uh, drafted some sections also to be incorporated. I don't know whether the parliament will accept or not. That the cost of the litigation that will take place and the time that it will take place 
should be a factor to be considered at the time of pre-litigation pre mediation. Now, if that is to be done, as, as Anil pointed out, mediation in India also will become lucrative because then if a, if a lawyer is settling a matter up front for his client and if he's paid also handsomely, I think it will be a win-win even for the legal community. So it will be a win-win for the parties, it will be a win-win for the legal community as well. So I think there is a lot of scope in this country for mediation and the kind of uh, um, judicial uh, overload that we have and the way the judges and the uh, courts are flooded with uh, uh, litigation matters and not able to handle um, uh, the bulk of it because of the, the sheer volumes of litigation. I think mediation is one way by which the load can be lessened on the, on the regular courts and the parties who mediate go back with a win-win situation. Thank you. Thank you, Vikas, sir. With the pendency in courts, as you rightly said, mediation is both sides are winners. And internationally, how, how the mediation is being dealt with countries like US, sir. With this, may I now request Honorable Mr. Justice P.S. Narsima, Judge Supreme Court, to kindly give his address. And we are extremely thankful to sir that he took out time to come and address the gathering. Thank you, Rahul. President of the Bar Association, Mr. Vikas Singh, Anil Zevia, Pradeep, senior members of the Supreme Court Bar Association, Skora, my friends. For me, it's like homecoming. And um, I also think that uh, this particular speech which I'm asked to give by chance, it has come because uh, my dear colleague, uh, uh, Justice Kaul, was not well. And I grabbed this opportunity for two very important reasons. One is that mediation is something uh, which I can say a new discovery for me. Like almost all of you, I had been a hardcore litigating lawyer and uh, after I became a judge when by chance we would take final hearing matters some of the old matters come up for hearing which were matters which shouldn't have been considered even at the trial court itself but to my shock I had seen those matters pending for 15 years. So this thought kept coming in my mind as to whether the system has really worked for us or not. Today I am not going to tell you how good mediation is or how important mediation is. I am fully aware that I am addressing the Supreme Court Bar Association and I am going to focus on discussing with you as to what is the relevance of mediation for all of us practicing here. One important change which, is, which we have all encountered is the change by virtue of technology. We have now seen how much uh, it has entered our day-to-day -day life. We walk into the court with an iPad in our hand. It's become inevitable. Courts are, we appear through the VC. Our drafting is, of course, as I started, we had this cy cyclo style to be prepared when especially petitions were to be prepared of. Everybody knows. And then we moved on to photocopying and thereafter to computer. We wouldn't forget those days. But then the technology entered our lives without we realizing it. A lot of people say that I don't know how to operate a smartphone. It just happens. You don't need to get to know the technology. Another important feature which is going to enter our lives is because of the reason, the method and system by which dispute resolution methodology, the adversarial litigation, which we have adopted, 
for 17 years, 70 years after the advent, if the advent of the independence and we still continue. If we turn back and ask this question, has this system really worked for us or not? In some cases generally, but in civil cases, we have the data I've just collected from the Supreme Court. Let us confine ourselves to the Supreme Court. I'm addressing concerns of members practicing in our court and how mediation is relevant for us. Cases which are pending in our court for last 20 years are about 5,000 cases. Pending 15 years, last 15 years are about 8,000. Last 10 years, about 12,000 cases. Last five years, almost 30,000 cases which are pending here. And last, last year, just last year, where the matters were admitted, about 15,000 matters are there. Why is it that it's going to take such a long time for us to address the problem that a client comes to us, with problem with which the client comes to us, and asks us to resolve the problem? We file a specialty petition, comes up for admission, it gets either notice issued, matter goes on, couple of times getting adjourned and adjourned and finally a decision taken. But then the time taken in the Supreme Court is only a speck of it, a part of it. The time taken when the suit or a case is instituted in the trial court, goes in appeal and a revision and then comes here is a substantial amount. And go a step back and see why would the system takes so long to decide when two brothers go to the court and ask for a simple partition of the property between them or a man or a woman, a husband and wife want a divorce in a case. Why should it take about 15, 20 years? We should think, we should contemplate about the system that we have adopted. There must be something wrong in that. What really happened so far as adversarial litigation is concerned is, I keep mentioning this uh, quite often whenever I'm talking about mediation is, the system itself requires that you first of all find out whether the fact alleged is correct or not. So the entire lawyering, if I may use that expression, with the help of CPC, with the help of Evidence Act and other statutes, is to find out whether the statement made by the petitioner is correct or not. And for that reason, you take the evidence of the doc evidence through the documentary documents as well as the witnesses. So the whole process goes, a petitioner argues, a respondent argues saying that this fact never happened. And then the judge is to decide whether the fact happened or not. And what does he do? He only takes a decision which is closest to what he thinks is true. He doesn't have any divine eye. Probability. The method we have is a probability that a judge will adopt and say this is most probable so therefore I hold in favor or dismiss the matter. This is a process which takes about five years, six years, seven years. It's an understatement for me. And in the process of trying to find out what the fact is, through the only system that we have, the adversarial litigation, years are spent. Added to this problem, we have another issue, issues relating to infrastructure, issues relating to the number of judges who can hear the matter and dispose of. Those are incidental. But then the real issue is about the method of adversarial litigation. Is there an alternative to that? The alternative which is going to come into place, which is going to enter into the practices of all the lawyers in times to come, is going to be revolutionary. Take it from me that we have suffered enough with this kind of an adversarial litigation, which may be useful for determination on interpretation of a constitutional provision or where you go to the court and file a writ petition against the exercise of power by the state. But simple issues concerning contracts, family matters, civil disputes, the method perhaps did not suit us. You will judge for yourself. 
whether it's suited or not. The alternative method, which has caught up, was there before we adopted the adversarial litigation. It would have been simpler, easier, faster, cheaper. Is that going to replace the existing system? Why is it that we have not adopted it then? There is some problem that it has not occupied our professional life so much. There is a suspicion about how it works. We really don't know whether we have, will be benefited by it or not. Take it from me that mediation is as much a legal profession as it is in the case of litigation. It would require adaptation of skill, number one. It would require adaptation of methods which will be a part of a professional duty. Therefore, upgradation is absolutely necessary for almost every one of us without any exception because adversarial litigation is going to degree, decrease from time to time. And after a period of time, we will have lawyers who will double up as mediators. If there is a litigation, you will appear as a lawyer and appear before the court. At the same time, lawyer will double up as a mediator. Skills are very distinct. So therefore, as lawyers, one has to undergo the training. MCPC has conducted. A lot of Supreme Court lawyers have also undergone, as just being mentioned. The process, this has to be adopted by not merely those who prefer to be a mediators. The training is necessary even for those who want to be regularly practicing lawyers of the court. What happens is this. After some amount of training as a mediator, you would get to know how to resolve disputes through or without the mediation of the court, without the uh, uh, presence of the court. That is not easily possible like that of an advocate. My, uh, one of the earliest experience I had was uh, when Justice Bobde asked me, uh, when I was as an amicus in the BCCI matter, he said, why don't you mediate in the case? I had to tell him that uh, a lawyer appearing for the parties can't become a mediator. But he wouldn't listen. So anyway, I thought to myself that because of the conflict of interest, if I proceed with the mediation, and by the end of it, whether it is successful or unsuccessful, I would report back and say that I have tried as a mediator. And after this, if the matter has to go on before the court, I won't appear in the case. But fortunately, it worked. The point I'm sharing with you is the very important feature that distinguishes a lawyer from that of a mediator. Both are the same persons. You can be a brother. You, can, you are also a husband. You are also a son. So humans, we can adopt multiple roles. We argue a case, in which case we go by interpretation. You look into the provision. You read the statute and then say, this is how it is to be read. This is how it is to be interpreted. Whereas in a mediation, when you are talking to the person, as I did the first mistake as a mediator, when the members of the cricket association came before that as a lawyer in my enthusiasm, I read the, all the files and I decided this is the best point. So when they came to me, I said, uh, problem itna asan se ho jayega, and this is how it should be done. Then they looked at me uh, and said, uh, you are also like them, you wouldn't listen to us. So that was a kind of a shock to me that you have to definitely undergo a change. As a mediator, you are not to give a lecture or you are not to give an idea, you are not to give a thought of how to resolve a problem. You do that every day in a court. You, as a judge, decide every day. But what happens in a mediation is that you are not propelled 
by deciding what is the fact, what is the truth in a fact, an extraordinary change occurs. That is, you are mellowed down and you are here to listen to him and ask him what the problem is and think as he thinks and understand him. Conceive the problems that he has, what could be his relationship with the other person and how he would react and then try and suggest that there are some avenues by which it could be solved. It's a completely different role that one has to assume when you become an arbitrator. So this change of being a lawyer, which is one, if I use that expression, one, one particular technology of presentation of a case before the court to convince the judge. What you do as a lawyer is to sell your idea to a judge, convince the judge and accept your point to that of a situation where you are trying to mold the mind of a person and persuade him to take his own decision, his own decision, which will be beneficial to him and also the person who is litigating against him. This role is of very, very distinctive and the professionals like uh, Anil Xavier and others have mastered the expertise on that. So it will be definitely an eye-opener for uh, many of us to attend a session which is uh, going to be a physical session or it might be an online session. I think there are a lot of online sessions that are going on. And we need to catch up. We need to definitely catch up because the world is changing. It's going to change enormously with enormous speed as well. We have been thinking about it for a very long time. Uh, in the MCPC, when I was a member as a lawyer here, uh, the idea was uh, brought about that uh, we must have a legislation. So one draft was made. All of us uh, were party to the draft. And uh, there were uh, two, three drafts. So we had to reconcile. And finally, it is now in the, uh, in the, in the executive and may be placed before the parliament. What the act does is, Anyway, first thing which the, which the act is going, how it's going to affect us. There's a clause which says that you can't institute a suit or a case before a court without first going for mediation and getting an order that, getting a report that mediation is either successful or unsuccessful. If it is successful, no problem. If it is unsuccessful, then you will have to get the report and tell the court. Till that time, suits won't get registered. Suits won't get numbered. There is only a very limited provision as per which in extraordinary situations you can get an interim order. Once the act comes into force, the need for mediators will increase multifold. So the big question is, where are the mediators? Where are the mediators? There are no mediators. There are hardly any mediators, just now uh, Anilji has told us. So are we as lawyers to look for mediators elsewhere or are we also to double up as mediators, do litigation and then also do mediation? And for that we need to be prepared. We need to train ourselves. We need to take the best of the courses and then do a mediation. Uh, to be as a mediator in one case and be as a lawyer in another case. This is the best opportunity, I would say, which is going to come to us, which is going to come to us. And very important thing is that I'm talking to my bar, the Supreme Court Bar Association. Can't be a medio mediocre mediator. You must upgrade your skills. You must be the Supreme Court mediators. One of some of the best or the biggest cases come here. And if we train ourselves, undergo the training, national, international, evolve our own principles, we shouldn't blindly follow what the West says. We must evolve our own principles which are suitable for our land, which is suitable for our culture, which is suitable for our Indian relationships. And then develop our own base in which 
you know, we can understand one another's culture. So we can very easily follow it and then provide the best of the uh, solutions to it. So we must upgrade ourselves. And Delhi High Court is a classic example which has a very good, which has a success story because it was a bar-driven mediation center. As against the MCPC, which was uh, entrenched in the court but co-opted many members of the bar, as I was a part of it at an earlier point of time. But there is a need for, apart from Mr. President, I'm suggesting to you, apart from the MCPC, you must also have informally a committee or a society wherein you will also build a mediation system, which is a part of the SCBA mediation strengthen. And of course, you will be part of MCPC also. The reason for that is that you will involve the members of our bar. And you will know uh, the interest that they would take. And uh, the members themselves will be able to assess how many persons will be interested and how to upgrade them. This is very much necessary, which uh, you must undertake and provide for the bar to upgrade that. And uh, what else you want me to talk about? <laughs> yes, of course, uh, the skills and other things uh, Mr. Xavier has uh, told us about it and the problems uh, that we had with respect to the adversarial litigation I have already mentioned. And uh, my suggestion is also there. So we'll work together. We'll work together towards building this uh, expertise in mediation and uh, upgrade our skills, provide infrastructure, also learn how to train the client. And another very, sorry, I forgot about it. A very important question is this. Uh, the question is a perception that mediation, something which is to be done as a charity. And uh, I get my fees and appear before the court, but a judge says that uh, why are you litigating, please go and do something about it. So the perception is that it's now shifted from the mold of a professional practice as a lawyer to that of trying to help the client. Two things, I mean, most of us, most of us, that's my belief in uh, all of us, have the goodness in our heart. So we definitely do that. We do that voluntarily. We do that out of our own volition, trying to help the client and trying to resolve the problem. The perception that lawyers are uh, only to make money is completely wrong. The concept of Western uh, legal aid is very, very different from the legal aid that we have. I'm just telling you, uh, the legal aid system in the West is very heavily funded. All of us, in our own experience, everyone, I think without any exception, in our country would have appeared for hardly any fees, for pittance, because we know that the client is poor. We don't wait for a legal aid system to come to us. Of course, we balance it with some other case. Dusra case mein jada fees mil jayega. So we have no hesitation doing it. All of us have grown up like that, without any exception. Without, I am confidently saying that uh, our systems are like that. And uh, for us, to do, media, to do legal aid is something which comes to us very naturally. That apart, if we are asked to take up mediation, it is now not to be perceived as something which we are doing as a charity. It is to be shifted now into a, yet another method of disposal of the case, which will also have what's called a revenue model, in which there will certainly be a fees which a lawyer would charge by renaming himself as a mediator, if he works as a mediator, and then act as professionally as possible and ensure that there is no conflict of interest and at the same time does it so very professionally. And over a period of time, as we have our regulator, the Bar Council of India, which will 
take care of our role as a lawyer and our professional conduct. We will also have regulations contemplated under the new act which is going to come, which will have a, have a mediation council. What does the council do? Mediation council will set norms as to how a mediation is to be conducted, what are the uh, prerequisites of a mediation to be a mediator, what are the qualifications for the mediator, how a mediator should not undertake a matter with conflict of interest. And another aspect is relating to accreditation. We don't have the concept of accreditation under the Advocates Act as, and also Bar Council of India because it's one bar, one lawyer. Maybe it's very good because there's no third authority to tell us who is good, who is not good and prioritize uh, one good advocate over the other. It's the free uh, bar and the clients that will uh, determine who to go. But so far as Mediation Act is concerned, there is, a, there is a provision for the Mediation Council to consider accreditation. We have, as, as judges, I see a number of uh, mediators of our bar having successfully done mediation. So I tried to see who the mediator are, but that's not available, doesn't really matter. But uh, that helps us over a period of time, a recognition of somebody as a good mediator, successful mediator makes a lot of difference because they are there for others to emulate and follow. They set an example uh, for others to go and check with them what is the best thing that they have done, what do you suggest. So those kind of things are possible and they will come into force in no time. And I would uh, conclude by uh, thanking the President for giving me this opportunity of coming, coming back to my own, my old house and my dear friends here. And uh, I would request all of you to take interest in mediation, upgrade yourself and make yourself uh, competent. And uh, I'm sure you will be at par with anywhere in the world in international standards. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's always good to have you back with us, sir. And sir has seen both sides. He was one of the best senior advocates in Supreme Court. Now he's a Supreme Court judge. So from his practical experience, he says what all changes are required in our thinking to mediate matters. And now we have around 200, 300 mediators in Supreme Court. That's not sufficient. And we, we should have more mediators and how to upgrade ourselves if we want to compete internationally. And as Justice <coughs> Call had also assured us, soon we are going to have more mediation training also. With this, may I now request Mr. Rohit Pandey, Joint Secretary, to kindly give a vote of thanks. Thank you, Rahul. We are grateful to Honorable Mr. Justice P.S. Narsimha, Judge, Supreme Court of India, for accepting our invitation for presiding the lecture on mediation. We are also thankful to Mr. Anil Javier, Chairman, Asia Pacific Center for Arbitration and Mediation, for accepting our invitation to attend this lecture and gracing the occasion with their presence. We thank senior members and members of the bar, Mr. Manoj Misra, President Iskora, Mr. Snehasis Mukherjee, Vice President Iskora, Mr. Devbrath, Secretary Iskora, learned law officers, and other distinguished guests for gracing the occasion. Thank you. I will just come to the second part. A lot of now we had a cricket tournament recently where around 500 members participated. One of the highest entries in last 10 years we had this time. So we had around 22 teams, 16 teams in under 50 category, three teams in women category, and three teams in over 50 ca ca category. Because I just started. I just took us all the mentors one by one just to in the uh, under 50 category. I just took Mr. Ashok Kumar Singh who sponsored our team along with his captain to kindly come forward, Mr. Jitain Singh Tawa. Mr. Ashok Kumar Singh. Huh? 
Mr. Ashok Kumar Singh. Oh, says there. Hmm. Captain is not available. Go in your seat, ma'am. Okay, Captain, ma'am. In your seat, ma'am. I will request Mr. Guru Krishna, sir. Mr. Ashok Kumar Singh. Who is Pandar? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Mr. Ashok Kumar Singh, senior advocate who sponsored our team. Yes, yes. I will request Guru Krishna, sir. Whose team won the tournament also to come along with his captain, Mr. Raj Sahu, he was around. Mr. Raj Sahu and Guru, Guru, Guru sir. He lost the first match, yes. Guru sir and Mr. Raj Sahu. Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, our Vice President, also sponsored our team along with his captain, Mr. Rajinder Chauhan. Mentor ka yeh la, picture haan. Mr. Rakesh Kumar Khanna sir, along with his captain Ashish Tawa, Rakesh Khanna sir, he was around. I'll just request all the mentors to kindly come forward, I'll just announce all their names one by one. चलो चलो जस्ट क्यों चलते हैं मिस्टर नरेंद्र हुडा सर नरेंद्र हुडा सर अलोंग विद इस कैप्टन अनिल हुडा सर आगे 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 शक्ना सर इसका थोड़ा अच्छा नहीं लगता धीरे-धीरे कन्ना सर आने उनके साथ आशीष नहीं है ठीक है आप चलो कन्ना सर टीम इज़ ऑलवेज अ विनर दिस टाइम अनफॉर्च्युनेटली लॉस � I would request Narendra Huda sir and Anu Huda sir to kindly come forward. Sir, I would request Deepak Bhattacharya sir and his captain Rajesh Sen. One thing I just wish to point out, Deepak Bhattacharya sir has been sponsoring our team ever since our tournament started around 15 years back. Every year he has a team. Such a big cricket fan he is. <coughs> His team win or lose doesn't matter, he always sponsors our team. He's not there. I would request Deepak Bhattacharya sir and Rajesh Sen ji. Char sir, I would request Char sir to come here. I'm just requesting you to come for the prize distribution, sir. No, no. I'm doing it. I'm going to call the prize. Mr. There is a team in the memory of late Amrinda Sharan, sir. I'd request Madhu Ma'am if she's here. Madhu Ma'am, Mr. Amit Anand Tiwari, the captain. Sir, prize distribution. 
मधु मैम एंड अमित आनंद तिवारी There's a team by Mr. Puneet Bali. Mr. Puneet Bali, senior advocate. I request Mr. Puneet Bali, senior advocate. Or Mr. Aditya is captain if he's around. Acha, Aditya is here. Puneet Bali sir is a former Ranji player also. Come on. I would request Jain Bhushan sir and Aditya Chaudhary is captain. Jain sir was around. Jain sir also sponsored. He is a good sportsman. Won a badminton tournament this time last year also. He's a good golfer also. <laughs> Now there is a there was a team in the memory of V Shekhar sir. We all know how good, how fond he was of cricket. The team is still continuing by his son Shashank Shekhar, who became an A.R. also this year. And request is Captain Vijay Singh if he's around. I would request Gopal Shankar Narayan, senior advocate, if, and along with this captain, Amit Sharma. Gopal Shankar Narayan played so passionately, got injured. Raj, you come, na? you come. That he injured himself. I would request Anupam Lal Das sir, his team reached the finals, unfortunately lost a very close final. And Raj Kamal to kindly come forward. And Siddhant Sharma. Siddhant come. Siddhant, Siddhant, Siddhant wants to come. I would just request Narendra Huda sir, just to come forward. He, he, uh, just, he sponsored the team this time. He was so passionate. He came for every match. Narendra Huda, sir. Now, next is our president, Mr. Vikas Singh. This time, his team lost in the semi-finals. Otherwise, he used to be a runner-up for the last four or five years. And captain was his son, Mr. Varun Singh, if he's around. Varun. He is a very good tennis player otherwise. <laughs> uh, I request Sonia Mathur, ma'am, along with the uh, captain Ankur Prakash. I'm told she, I think she had a matter, outstation matter today. I think she's not here. Yeah. I request Ankur Prakash to kindly come forward. I would request Baswa Patil, sir, along with his captain, Mr. Sudarshan Rajan. Baswa Patil, sir, or Sudarshan Rajan. Anyone from their team, if he's around? I would request C.U. Singh, sir, along with his captain, Amjad Makbul. Amjad was here. Yes, yes. Ah, yes, yes. Ah. <laughs> now, in the over 50 category, I would request our Vice President, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, who had a team. Unfortunately, lost in the finals along with his captain, Mr. Kuldeep Pariyar, to just kindly come forward. Mr. Kuldeep Pariyar was here. And I must point out, he, he has been playing cricket, lawyer's cricket for the last 30 years against Koda Century. <laughs> now, <coughs> next is Mr. Brijinda Chahar and Mr. Yashpal Singh. I think they have already did. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Vikas Pava. Who also sponsored our team along with his captain, Mr. Balbir Singh, ASG, if he's... Uh, now, in the women category, 
मिस्टर साजन पवैया सीनियर एडवोकेट अलॉन्ग विद दिस कैप्टन विकास पावर विकास अच्छा विकास आप लेंगे ठीक विकास पावर सर का साजन पवैया सर अलॉन्ग विद दिस कैप्टन राजश्री रेड्डी लॉस्ट अ वेरी क्लोज लॉस्ट टू क्लोज मैचेस प्लेड विद लॉर्ड ऑफ पैशन Now in the ladies category, the another team was sponsored by Mr. Vikas Singh in the women category also lost in the finals. Uh, and Vikas was junior. Deepika Kaliya was the captain. Uh, Deepika was Deepika was here. <laughs> Now another team was sponsored by Sonia Mathur, who is the chairman of the sports committee also, and the captain Bhart Bharti Ma'am. Bhart. कम 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 यस यस कम now and i'll start with the uh, under 50 cat men under 50 category the best batter is aditya archya who yeah he is always is the best batter in last 4 5 years of huh? now they call batter i guess for to batsman kar dijiye this bat ho gaya ho gaya ho gaya are kahan hai bhai ab batter hi bolte hain internationally because of that ha Now the best bowler is Raj Sau, captain of Guru Sir team. Raj Sau family is here. Is, is a kid. <laughs> call him, call him, call him, call him. Uh, and the best fielder is Zafar. Who played for CU Singh Sir? He is a wicketkeeper batsman. Zafar. की फोटो आने जाए नाउ मैन ऑफ द मैच इन द फाइनल मैच वॉज अगेन राज साहु द कैप्टन ऑफ गुरु कृष्ण इलेवन मैन ऑफ द मैच ट्रॉफी नाउ मैन ऑफ द सीरीज इज अगेन आदित्य आर्चिया is one of the best cricketers in the supreme court for last 20 years he plays county cricket also <laughs> now I'd request all the players now the win, all the players who in the winner team in the 50 under 50 category guru krishna sir team to just come one by one Uh, one by one, sir. They'll just come one by one, sir. They're, they're individually also. Uh, I'll just announce the names, Guru sir. Raj Sau, captain. I'm Guru Krishna sir. T. Raj Sau. Mr. Rajneesh Singh. Chand Verma. Rajneesh Singh is not here. Chand Verma is a good left arm. Mr Anil Divedi I request all of them to just come forward all the team members of Guru Sir's team Mr Anil Divedi ha pick the chart sir aap aage chale jao na foot yahan de le ha Anil Divedi sir Mr Lalman Yadav Lalman you take it here I think yes come over here Mr Mr Chandan Singh Chandan Singh I just request all the team members of Guru Sir's team to just kindly come on the stage so that they can come fast. All of you come. Mr. Chandan Singh is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, Chandan ji. Chandan. Okay. Okay. Mr. Abey Singh. Abey. Is here. Abey is there. Abey Singh, Ankur Kashyap, Shwetaab Kumar. Just please come this side. All of you come this side. Come, come, come. Just stay here, or all the team. Huh? Mr. Ankur Kashyap. Shwetaab Kumar Ankur played very well in the finals yes. Shwetaab Kumar is not there yes. T Raja Lakshman yeah. Come. 
Now, Mr. Shushil Dubey took a brilliant catch in semi-finals. And, and, and the finals, yes. Mr. Parvez Alam, who is again looks like come all the way from Mira today. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Parvez Alam. Mr. Naresh Kumar. Mr. D. Girish Kumar. Mr. Avdesh Yadav. Are they here? No. Girish. Mr. D. Girish Kumar, yes. Avdesh Yadav. Jatin Trivedi. Nitin Sinha. Nitin. Nitin is here. Mr. Gopi Chand. Yes. Mr. P. V. Kranti Prudvi Samrat. No, I think missing. Missing. Mr. Vikram Pratap Singh. Yeah, come, come. Mr. Rishabh Kapoor. Come, Rishabh. Mr. Amol Bhimra Ram Teke. Mr. Bobby Augustine, he was here. Bobby, Bobby. Yeah. Mr. Priyanka Dharu. Yes, Priyanka is here. So now I would request the whole team, Guru Sa's whole team, they are the winner of the under 50 category. A big round of applause for Guru Sa's team. I request Vikas sir to kindly have a hand over the trophy to Guru Sa. Achha, achha. Mr. Chanchu. Mr. Chanchu. और तो कोई नहीं बड़ा बड़ा टीम ट्रॉफी भाई टीम ट्रॉफी टीम ट्रॉफी मैन अंडर फिफ्टी क्या विकास सर दे आर सेइंग दे बेटे उधर सही वो थोड़ा अच्छा है वो लोग सब के लिए जगह ज़्यादा है सर आ जाएगा आ जाएगा सिंगल अब टीम अच्छा तो उसको हटवा देते हैं ना क्या कहे कहते हैं तो आइए ऊपर हाँ एक म I would request. I would request the whole team of Guru Sa's team. So now the trophy is, is being given to the winner of under 50 category Guru Sa's team. बोल दो ना ये किसी को स्टाफ अजीत जी ये हटवा दीजिए मीडियेशन वाला अरे वो हट जाएगा अजीत जी बोलो ना इसको ना ना तो रनर आप इन द अंडा फिफ्टी कैटेग Now I'd request the runner-up team players of Anupam Naldas 11 and they are the runner-up in under 50 category. Udhari, Udhari they all wanted there. Udhari, Udhari. Bol do. Ho gaya, haan. I would request Mr. Raj Kamal, the captain. One by one, I'll request all the team members. Raj Kamal, captain of Anupam Naldas 11. Raj. Raj. Siddhan Sharma, Raj Kamal, Siddhan Sharma, Nimish Chandra. I'll request all the team members of Anupam Lalda Sirevan to just come one by one this side, please. Raj Kamal, Siddhan Sharma, Nimish Chandra, Shakti Bhati, Shakti Bhati, Ratul Sharma. Mr. Manmohat Puri, 
Mr. Raman Yadav, just go one by one, all of you. Mr. Amod Biduri, Mr. Bhupender Singh, Mr. Prashant, Mr. Ashutosh Chaturvedi, Mr. Deepak Kansal, he was here. Deepak. No, no. Mr. Gaurav Patak, Kuber Bodh, any, all the players who are there from the team may just kindly go one by one. That is better, I guess. Siddhant, sab ho gaye? Ho gaye khatam? Now, I would request Mr. Anupam Lal Das 11, who is the runner-up in under 50 category. I will just request Justice, Justice Narsim and Vikas sir to kindly hand over the trophy to Mr. Anupam Lal Das 11. He sponsored our team last year also and this year he is a runner-up. Just get the trophy. So the runner-up is under 50 categories, Anupam Lal Das 11. I request the whole team of Mr. Anupam Lal Das, senior advocate, to just kindly be there. Yes, sir. Five minutes. So, today's photo will be taken. Which is that? Which is that? You will do it. Yes. 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 Seema? Ajit ji. Now we'll go to the women category. Now the best better in the women category is Mandakni Singh. Mandakni Singh, she was here. Huh? Mandakni Singh, who played for Vikas Singh 11. <laughs> so the and I must point. Yes, she 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 was a team member of our president. <laughs> now the best bo bowler of the tournament is Ruma Patak, and man of the match also woman of the match also for the finals. Ruma Patak. Ruma Patak. Just be, just stay here, you have a lot more prizes. Huh. Yes. And the best fielder, Niruma, she is here. Now the best fielder is again Mandakni Singh and women of the series again Mandakni Singh from Vikas Singh 11. So she performed well in all the three departments. Now I'll request one by one from Sonia Mathur 11, the winner, one by one, all the players to kindly come forward. Ms. K.V. Bharti Upadhyay. Uh -huh. Women of the match was Ruma Patak, yes. K.V. Bharti Upadhyay, captain of Sonia Mathur 11. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Dr. Swati Jindal. Bhuvneshwari Patak. Ruma Patak. Savita Devi, I'll just request all the team members to just come one by one, who all are there. Savita Devi, Shweta Hingorani, Jasmine Kaur Maini, A. Deepa. Hey, brother, they don't have a price to take them individually, then they don't give them. Aisha Siddiqui, Gagandeep Kaur, Anuja Petia, Shibani Bhattacharji, Savita Singh, 
गीतांजलि त्रिपाठी काजल रानी सीमा उधर देखो ना दिलवा दो सबको वन बाई वन ट्रॉफी दिलवा दो हो गई नाउ एट रिक्वेस्ट सोनिया माथुर मैम इज नॉट एयर कैप्टन टू जस्ट टेक द ट्रॉफी ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ सोनिया माथुर मैम द विनर इन द वेमेन कैटेगरी भारती मैम अच्छा हो रहे हाँ हाँ बिल्कुल टेक योर टाइम अभी आप आगे चलो कह रहे हैं मेरा दे हाँ हो गया अभी है यार टाइम है ना रुक जाओ टाइम लगेगा यार इन द रन अच्छा फोटो हो रही है आपके आई रुकेस्ट नाउ इन द रनर अप कैटेगरी द रनर अप इन द वेमेन कैटेगरी इज आवर प्रेजिडेंट जी मिस्टर विकास सिंह इलेवन आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द टीम मेंबर्स टू जस्ट कम वन बाय वन दीपिका कालिया कैप्टन दीपिका मंदाकनी सिंह आशिमा मंडला अर्चना पाठक दवे अंकिता चौधरी शशि दुनेजा प्रज्ञा बद्योलिया रीना राव सुरजिता पटनायक सकीना किडवई हरविंदर चौधरी निर्मला बोराडे रीटा पुनिया हर्षिता रघुवंशी सीमा पटना रोहिणी वाघ राहुल भाई के एल डी इलेवन में अजय के नाम एक मुझे आई वुड नाउ रिक्वेस्ट टू हैंड ओवर द ट्रॉफी फॉर द रनर अप टू विकास सिंह मिस्टर आर प्रेसिडेंट इन द वेमेन कैटेगरी ट्रॉफी ट्रॉफी अजय जी ट्रॉफी वहाँ क्यों खड़े अच्छा जस्ट द ट्रॉफी फॉर द रनर अप टू मिस्टर आर प्रेसिडेंट विकास सिंह सीनियर एडवोकेट आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द टीम मेंबर्स ऑफ विकास सिंह इलेवन टू काइंडली गो दैट साइड ना हो गई फोटो गई है मतलब फिफ्टी ओवर फिफ्टी Now we come to the over 50, over 50, huh? Now we come to the over 50 category. The best batsman in the over 50 category is Mr. Rajiv Narayan. Mr. Rajiv Narayan. Mr. Rajiv Narayan. He performed in all the matches. I would request others to just kindly <coughs> go downstairs. Please just leave the stage, others. जिनका होगी भाई ले जाओ अपना कब करा सीमा पानी दियो एक मिनट एक मिनट अभी एक एक करके एक एक करके सर ना द बेस्ट बॉलर इज अगेन मिस्टर राजीव नारायण 
द बेस्ट बॉलर इज अगेन मिस्टर राजीव नारायण एज ए द बेस्ट फील्डर इज मिस्टर मुकेश शर्मा मिस्टर मुकेश शर्मा मैन ऑफ द मैच मैन ऑफ द मैच इन द फाइनल इज अगेंस्ट मिस्टर राजीव नारायण ही पर मैन ऑफ द मैच इन द फाइनल राजीव नारायण अगेन मैन ऑफ द सीरीज मिस्टर राजीव नारायण सारे पूरा सीप नाउ इट रिक्वेस्ट द रनर अप टीम इज अगेन मिस्टर वाइस प्रेसिडेंट मिस्टर प्रदीप कुमार राय इलेवन आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द टीम मेंबर्स टू काइंडली कम वन बाय वन मिस्टर कुलदीप परियार इज कैप्टन मिस्टर कुलदीप परियार मिस्टर प्रदीप कुमार राय मिस्टर विमल रे मिस्टर मुकेश शर्मा निक्की कांतावाला अरविंद कानवा अमर राय जादा रविंदर यादव आई डोंट नो आई जस्ट वॉज इन कोर्ट कभी मेरी बात नहीं आई भूपेंद्र शर्मा ब्रिजभूषण जौहरी हरदीप सिंह ढैया जे एन एस त्यागी ए भास्कर प्रकाश सिंह नेगी सुरेश शर्मा संदीप पांडी विकास बंसल अनिप लौचुब सतीश हुडा डॉक्टर संदीप सिंह मिस्टर नीरज श्रीवास्तव संजय मलिक अजय अमृताज मनी भूषण सिन्हा आई जस्ट रिक्वेस्ट देम वन बाय वन जस्ट काइंडली गो टू पिकअप देयर इंडिविजुअल ट्रॉफीज हाँ सबके लिए अभी आपके नहीं लिए गए ना आपकी टीम तो इस टीम के भी नहीं लिए गए प्रदीप कुमार आए लगा अभी यार अब हो गया अब रुक जा रहा हूँ आई वुड जस्ट रिक्वेस्ट अदर्स टू जस्ट काइंडली गो डाउन स्टे प्लीज लेट द आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट अदर अदर मेम्बर्स टू जस्ट काइंडली लीव द स्टेज तो अपने मेंबर्स। आई जस्ट रिक्वेस्ट टू हैंड ओवर द ट्रॉफी टू रनर ऑफ मिस्टर प्रदीप कुमार राय और वाइस प्रेसिडेंट इन द ओवर 50 कैटेगरी जिस हैंड ओवर द ट्रॉफी टू मिस्टर प्रदीप कुमार राय वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एस सी ट्रॉफी देख लो ना यहां ट्रॉफी दे देने दे दी अरे जो अरे क्या कर रहे हैं स्टाफ का चलो क्या चलो बदल लेंगे अभी बदल स्टाफ का बुलाओ स्टाफ को बिना वाली दे दीजिए बिना आपको चेंज अरे भैया ये रनर आपको ना नाउंस किए थे पहले तुमने बिना वाली दे दी हां ये कौन से हैं ये बदल के चेंज कर लेना अजीत जी अरे अजीत को बुलाओ इधर ठीक है जस्ट हैंड ओवर द ट्रॉफी टू रनर ऑफ मिस्टर प्रदीप कुमार राय इलेवन मिस्टर प्रदीप इन द ओवर फिफ्टी कैटेगरी अरे उनका नहीं है अभी भाई आई वुड जस्ट रिक्वेस्ट अदर्स टू जस्ट काइंडली लीव द स्टेज सो दैट फोटोग्राफ्स कैन बी टेकन हाँ तो मैं क्या करूँ आज तो सुनी नहीं तो मैं क्या करूँ ना इन द विनर कैट विनर कहाँ हो गया भाई रनर अब बोला है मैंने सुनो तो सही कहाँ से चार सा विनर अभी आए हो चुका है उनका भाई जो भी आ रहा है लेके जा रहा है वो उसे रनर आओ प्रदीप कुमार रहे हैं बोल तो दिया था पहले उनकी टीम ही अब चार सा रिकॉर्ड लास्� खत्म हो गया बस आप जाइए नीचे ग्राउंड पे भी क्या होता है हमेशा प्राइस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन में ग्राउंड पे तो ऐसे गोला लग जाता है ना सफा से आते हैं यहाँ तो यहाँ तो फिर भी इतना हो रहा है नहीं तो पता है क्या होता है सुनो 
ग्राउंड पे तो भी लास्ट टाइम ग्राउंड पे क्या हुआ था सुना अच्छा अच्छा हो गया भीड़ हो गई फुल I can see Char sir. They are so happy. The chairman of the sports committee, the winner of the over 50 category. All his team members to also kindly go there. जाओ अब 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 हाँ जी। I request Char sir, team members. मिस्टर यशपाल सिंह कैप्टन मिस्टर राजीव नारायण कमल पुंडीर पीयूष कांत रॉय महेश भारद्वाज आमिर यादव राजेंद्र गुप्ता अमरजीत सिंह मैनी संजीव सिंह करुणाकर मालिक राजीव शर्मा संजय शर्मा सैयद उरुज अब्बास सत्यवीर सिंह राणा धीरज सम्मी कमलेन मिश्रा मिश्रा मक्कड़ जीएस मक्कड़ चंद्रकांत सुकुमार सरकार सुरेश कुमार बान मुकेश कुमार मरोड़िया विमलेश कुमार सिंह विवेक शोल से